So guys, here we are in game and now I'm going to show you how the um, game is actually played via the tutorial but before I do that I was fiddling around in the options here um, oh, kind of broke it I was fiddling around in the options here um, I was just changing some advanced stuff like um, simplified target I turned off and um, auto assigned damage I turned off but um, I found this section how to play and it actually covers exactly what I uh, went through in the last video you know parts of the card casting spells um, casting spells you know instant sorceries you know combat I'll cover that in the um, actual game um, but this I found and I found it very interesting it actually breaks down the what the different colours of magic actually stand for. So white um, magic lays down the law, protecting and defending its allies. White magic calls on soldiers, knights and even angels. From them on a light, shield the sword. So you know, it just gives a basic breakdown. Um, so white is good, black's obviously evil, um, blue is air, water, um, things of the mind, red it embodies fire and lightning, passion and fury, green is all about tooth and claw ferocity. So you know it just gives a nice breakdown there. So if you own the game it's worth looking at if you know just come to this section, it's under how to play in the options menu. But anyway, let's get on with the tutorial. So it's Oh goodness me, a few technical difficulties but here we are, we're back in game, um, this is the tutorial, I've literally just started it up and this is the first um, box that comes up to you. Uh, it pretty much explains that you are a planeswalker, you have the ability to um, summon creatures, uh, play spells, do that kind of stuff. Up here is your enemy, Soren Markov. You each have 20 hit points here represented by this bar and the aim of the game is to reduce your opponent to zero and uh, then you win. Um, something that you've seen happen to me an awful lot uh, but besides the point let's continue yep he's up there doing his ting um, parts of the turn um, it's split up into uh, three main uh, oh I shouldn't call it main three core phases first being the main phase then a combat phase and then followed up by a second main phase if you want to break it down there are lots more individual um, sections but this is a more simplified version of that so at the beginning of the game you get to draw seven cards this is your hand um, okay so on a normal game of magic you'll have the ability to um, actually what's the word I'm looking for mulligan your hand so if you don't like what you see and you can mulligan it uh, for another seven cards and then if you don't like that you can mulligan again, you can mulligan as many times as you want but you will start dropping cards so you can mulligan once for free and get your another seven but then if you do it again you'll only get six and then you'll only get five and only four so on and so forth so anyway it wants me to zoom in on here um, but anyway, um, you can you can only play one land card on each of your turns, and as I explained before, land is used to summon any kind of card in the game, be it a creature or a spell. You can only lay one of these per turn. You can uh, lay them in either of your main phases, so either before the combat or after the combat. Um, you can only summon creatures during uh, summon creatures and perform. Um, certain spells during your main phase. Other spells such as instants can be cast um, pretty much any time. So here we go, let's lay a forest for this turn. And because we can't lay a creature, our turn will automatically end and pass on to Sorin. I imagine he'll do pretty much the same. Skip the combat phase because he can't lay anything. Skip the other main phase because he can't lay anything. Back to us. Okay. Action. You've drawn a creature that costs two mana to cast. Before you can cast Rune Bear Claw, here, see, you will need to play another forest because he requires two mana to play. So here we go, we're going to lay another forest. And now we have the ability to cast the bear. And what you see is when I cast the bear, you'll see these cards turn on the side, and that's called tapping. Tapping is a term used in this game which pretty much means that card is performing an action. So the action these cards are performing are summoning this card. So here we go, we've tapped it. Oh, <laughs> promise a tutorial. Okay. So when you use mana from a land, the land becomes tapped until your next turn. 
so this means these have turned sideways, I can't use these again this turn. So we click continue. Tapping is something you'll hear a lot in this game. A lot, <laughs> so it's always nice to understand what it means. Because I, I, I remember Tom Batol saying to me, he said, um, I was watching your video and I have no idea what tapping means. <laughs> I was like, oh god. Uh, but anyway. Your, t your turn has two phases, one before the combat and one after. Yeah, I've just explained that. Okay. So now it's probably going to take us through to the combat to explain combat. Okay, so during your combat phase you can attack with your opponent with your creatures. Click on Rune Bear Claw to attack with it. So, attack, it, attack him. Click attack. And as I explained before in the card tutorial, um, the left represents your attack. So I have two power, so I deal two damage. So there is no limit to the number of creatures you can have on the battlefield. Okay. Okay. So we're going to lay another forest, and then we're going to tap them to lay our center. And as you see, these purple swirls, these represent what's called summoning sickness. Summoning sickness is just a fancy term um, to pretty much say that creatures can't attack on the on the turn that they're laid. So I'll only be able to attack with this guy um, on my next turn, but I can defend with him, so it's not the end of the world. Alright, so he's going to start casting a um, spell now. So it's called Disfigure, and when he lays it I'll show you it. So it's a instant card, and it can be... it. Um, targets a creature for minus two minus two so as you can see he's targeting my rune bear claw which is a two two so this effectively kills him reducing him to zero zero toughness and he's put into the graveyard over here which means he's out of play now unless I have a card that can summon him back into play but I don't so so you can attack Sorin with your centaur cruiser okay During the combat phase you can attack your opponent with your creatures, click on the centaur, attack with it. Okay. Okay, dealing three damage. Lovely, loving it. Now I can cast this fella in my hand. So Sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze, but I didn't. <laughs> so, it's a good idea to play a land on each of your turns. With more mana, you can cast bigger spells, of course. So, click on the forest to play it. I always play my forest before I do anything in the game, but... There you go. Oh, I was land, sorry, not forests. Anyway, on Sorin's turn, he plays a swamp, but then attacks me with Rufus Coldblade. Okay. I guess we're going to show off defending now, or blocking. So as you can see he's attacking me. So if you have an untapped creature, and remember untapped means it hasn't attacked on the previous or used an ability, so as you can see in the background here my centaur has attacked so it's become tapped, whereas the card I just laid has not been tapped, so I can uh, block with him. To do that I just literally assign who I want to block and this initiates uh, like a mini duel between the two. So what happens is we both attack each other at the same time. So Ruthless Coldblade has two power, so it deals two damage to me. At the same time, it's very important, um, my monster deals three damage to it. Since Ruthless Coldblade only has one toughness, three damage is enough to destroy it. Whereas I have three toughness and it only has two power, so I remain on the battlefield for the remainder of so for the remainder of this turn I only have one toughness on this creature but as soon as it flips back to my turn or the turn's finished everything's reset so here we go instant cards are cards you can cast any time even after your opponent has cast a spell before it has made its effect as you play more games of magic you know the best time to cast an instant for now hold on to your giant growth which is a card I've just drawn here so it wants me to continue to combat phase you can choose an attack to your opponent with untapped creatures, so we're actually going to attack with both. 
So here's going to show an example of um, countering spells. So as you can see, he's laying a card which has minus three, minus three, and he's targeting uh, my three, three center. So Soren has interrupted my attack and cast Last Gasp to target uh, center. When it resolves, Last Gasp will reduce Centaur's power and toughness by three. But what you can do is you can stop the timer, as you can see here, which uh, pauses any because normally it has a I, gu I guess it has just like a set time you have to react so when you pause it you can um, choose what you want so here I'm going to lay this card which will boost my card by plus three plus three making it a six six so uh, when his card finally takes effect it will only reduce me to three three instead of zero zero so any card you lay in response to a spell will always resolve before theirs. So no, I wanna So your dry growth will resolve before his. It's just to give you kind of a fighting chance, I guess, otherwise you'd be it'd be pretty lame. <laughs> So anyway, as you can see, my spell takes effect, boosting him, and then his takes effect and reduces me. So that's just like a basic um, overview of how you can, um, what's the word I'm looking for, interrupt, or uh, kind of, uh, what's the word, react to spells, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to lay another land. At the end of the turn, all damage is removed from your creatures. So, um... I explained that earlier when we had that little duel. So on his fifth turn, he plays a swamp and then casts Doomblade. I love this card, Doomblade. It's one of my favourite cards. It literally, it's a just a simple, simple removal card. It just destroys any non-black creature that it's targeting. And I don't have any response to it, so I'm just gonna have to let it do me in. So it's my turn, you've drawn an enchantment. During your main phase you can cast an enchantment the same way you could cast a creature. Continue. Your turn. An aura is a type of card or of enchantment that you can attach to another card. When you cast an aura you must choose a target for it to enchant. Now this is a card type I left out, I kind of um, overlooked this. It's effectively um, like equipment but it's a spell. So what this is, you attach it to a creature for this mana cost and it will give you plus one plus one for each forest you control. So as you can see it's asking me to equip this to this and as I have one two three four five forests out I'll get boosted to eight eight. I'm gonna lay another forest and attack with him killing him. So that's just a basic enchantment um, they can be very powerful very powerful enchantments. So there we go, I am the winner. <laughs> you won't see that often. But um, I hope that gave you a better understanding of magic, um, just the way the game's broken down and how it's played and what the individual cards mean and what the terms mean. But So if there's anything that you feel like I've left out or anything you still don't understand, please leave it as a comment and I'll explain it um, in future videos. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.